got a little ahead of ourselves in the lecture because um, a lot of the things that we're going to do in this lecture, they're kind of, they're things that we've already been doing, but now we're going to, to purposefully do them, or we're going to say if you do them in a certain combination, this is how they'll work. And so we probably should have started with talking about this idea of the clipboard and what that is, and some basic steps for duplicating and copying and pasting content so that you can work together, uh, work with them together in one document. And so one of the easiest ways to combine images is to transfer one image or part of one image to another via the cut and copy commands and then paste them into a new location, whether that's a new layer in your existing document or you close out of that document and you open up a new file and you paste it in that. This is done by moving the selected content to the clipboard. And so a lot of students or a lot of people in general, they'll understand that you can copy something but maybe you don't recognize where it's going. And where it's going, that imaginary place in the cloud above your head and somewhere in the electronic world is called the clipboard. Um, there are some, some limitations of the clipboard. It can only hold one thing at a time. And so if you copy a blue circle and then you copy a red circle and then you choose paste, you're only gonna be pasting the red circle. So it'll override whatever is has been last saved on the clipboard. And so keep that in mind. You can't just kind of store a bunch of stuff there. It just remembers the very last thing that you copied or you cut. Uh, some fun facts about uh, copying, pasting, etc. is that once you copy or you cut, so to copy makes a duplicate, to cut takes away what you have in preparation of putting it somewhere else. Um, you can paste it or you can paste it into or outside of a selection or what's called a container if you're using other Adobe programs. And so you could just hit paste and then hopefully it pastes where you want it to go. Or you could choose to paste into something and then it would go into your selection or you can choose in Photoshop to paste outside and it will paste outside your selection. Uh, one last thing that I don't have on the slide but is available to you, you can paste in place. And so a lot of the times in InDesign software, and spe uh, specifically, maybe you're working on a 12-page booklet of some sort, and you have something on page 6 that's in the bottom right-hand corner, and you also want it to be on page 10. If you copy it and you paste it, it might just kind of place it anywhere on page 10. But if you choose Edit, Paste, and Place, it'll paste it in the exact place that it was on the other page, but instead of being on page 6, it will now be on page 10. Um, copy versus cut is key. Um, if you copy something, you're just making a copy of it. And in most cases, it doesn't matter if you're copying or you're cutting, you're going to get the same result because you're, you're making a duplicate of what you want to use and then you're going to go somewhere else and you're going to paste it and you're going to use it, right? And so if you open up this image of New York City street line and you make a circle selection in the middle and you copy it and then you go somewhere else and you paste it, you're going to get the same result as if you cut it and then you go somewhere else and you paste it. The problem occurs if you want to keep the, the New York City street lines image for some other reason. If you choose copy, you've done nothing to the image and it will still look like the first image up here. But if you choose cut, you'll end up with a big hole like down here in the bottom. Now maybe that's what you want to do because you want to have a hole through it to see whatever's behind it. Um, but if, if when in doubt, use the copy feature as opposed to cut, because then you always have the backup of coming back to it. Be careful when you're copying and pasting images or parts of images from one document to another. Uh, resolution differences between images can be a huge problem. And so the first thing that you should do anytime you open up a picture, doesn't matter if you're cropping it, you're working on selections and masking, or you're doing combining images like we're covering for this lecture, you should always know what you have to start out with. What type of file is it? What is the resolution? How many pixels are in it? What color mode is it using, etc. Um, if you end up copying and pasting content from one document to another and the sizes of the images are drastically different, you can end up with something like on the screen here. So on the right hand side, I'm looking at the image of the New York street line and the countryside, and to me they look the same. Right, they're the same size, they're good to go. But when I copied and I pasted the, the country scene into the same document as the New York City scene, you can see that the country document is much smaller than the New York City scene. And so if I was hoping to create some sort of hole through the city to see the country, then I don't know that I could use this image because it doesn't fill up the whole area. And so our, our next thing to do would be to show examples of this and show you how to fix it. 
and we'll cover that in the next video.